Good morning everyone. Today I wanted to discuss the technique of fig pinching. It is June 8th today and I'm starting to see a lot of people start discussing pinching their figs. And this is one of those techniques where I think there is a lot of confusion centered around fig pinching. A lot of people are not sure when to do it and what it does and, and why people do it. The first thing I wanted to discuss is that fig pinching is not like pruning tomatoes. The reason why you prune tomatoes is multifaceted. You prune tomatoes for increased vigor and fruit set along the main stem. You prune tomatoes for increased fruit size. You prune tomatoes to promote airflow and uh, reduce the instances of disease in your garden. Pruning tomatoes is something that every single gardener should do, but this is not the case for figs. Pinching your figs is only something you should do if you absolutely have to do it, and there are only a handful of times where you should actually be pinching your figs. It's very important that if you're watching this video for instructional purposes, you stick with it all the way until the end because I want to discuss timelines for fruiting your fig trees via pinching. There are only three reasons to pinch a fig. Reason number one is that you want to accelerate the timeline at which a fig tree will naturally set fruit. Every single common female fig tree will naturally set fruit provided that the growing season is long enough. The reason why you would pinch your fig tree is because you don't want to wait until August or September or October for that fruit to set and ripen fully. You would pinch it to accelerate the natural timeline at which it would set fruit anyway. Reason number two is because you are growing a fig tree that is a variety that has a fruit ripening period longer than your growing season. So let's say you live up in the northeast and your frost free period is only 190 days and you're growing a notoriously long a growing season fig like a black madeira or a col de dame blanc. These fig trees are known to take a while to set fruit and once they do, they have a ripening period of about 90 to 100 days. So if the natural timeline in your climate is so these fig trees don't start making little fruits, little figlets, until, say, the middle of July, well, now you're just not going to have enough time. You're not going to have 90 to 100 days of heat and frost-free period left in your season for them to ripen. So if you are growing later season varieties than your climate can accommodate, you will have to pinch your fig trees. Reason number three is to shape your fig tree. If you were to go ahead and pinch this fig tree right here, this growth pattern is going to stop growing straight up the way it is now. What's going to happen is the energy of the fig is going to go up here. It's going to realize that there's no growth point left. It's going to come back it's going to head backwards and then it's going to go to one of the nearest nodes and it is going to branch out in all directions. I would strongly recommend against this practice. I would not recommend pruning your fig trees during the active growing season. I would suggest just letting them go and then pruning them uh, when they are dormant and you'll get a better shape and a healthier tree overall instead of damaging it and stressing it out during the growing season. Under all other circumstances, you do not want to pinch your fig trees. And I'll explain to you why. All of the figs that you see here are first year cuttings with the exception of two. The tree that you see here is a Col de Dame Noir. And what you will notice is that naturally it is exhibiting a very, very nice growth pattern. It has two main stems, and they're growing up nice and straight, and they are getting nice and thick. And this tree is going to, once it goes dormant, make fantastic cuttings for me. These cuttings are nice and thick. Look how nice and thick they are. Look how nice and straight they are. They are going to be great. They are going to be good quality wood for me to root. 
and for, and for me to propagate this tree into many, many copies. Now I want to show you what will happen if you pinch your fig tree during the active growth phase. This tree right here is my Violette de Bordeaux fig. Now I bought this tree last year. It's one of only two trees that I own that is not a first year cutting. And what you'll notice here is that it's very, very bushy. And the reason why it is like that is because I pruned it while it was dormant. And I want to show you what that looks like. So here, I let it get frosted last year. And you can see down here where I went ahead and I cut the tree about 18 inches from the base um, in, in the middle of the winter. And now this year it is growing out in all different directions because I'm trying to grow them all my figs is a single stem tree that sort of goes like this that will have three to four multiple uh, main growing stems coming up 18 inches from the base and it is doing that however you'll notice how ugly and spindly this wood is you'll see it's pretty thin you'll see it's kind of scraggly a lot of these branches are going to have to be pruned off next year and they're not good fruit setting wood and I'm well aware when you prune a fig tree the second year or the uh, the very next year after after the main decapitation at the main stem, you're not going to get a lot of production, and that's fine. I'm okay with investing uh, time into my trees to get that perfect shape. But if you're just going around and pinching your your fig trees to get them to set fruit, they are all going to do this. You're going to take away that nice straight, beautiful pattern that my Col de Dom Noir and all my other figs are naturally growing in, and you're going to snap off the tip just to induce fruiting, and then at all of these different growing tips, they're all going to start bushing out in all different directions and growing the spindly growth that is not particularly useful, and it's not even, generally speaking, good quality wood for cuttings you're not going to get nice thick cuttings and they may not even fully lignify by the end of the year and you'll end up with green wood that you can't do much with. So the only reason to pinch your figs is to force fruiting along an unnatural timeline and if your growing season is long enough to let that fig tree naturally set fruit you do not want to do it. And I'll give you a few examples of that now. This tree right here is my Italian 258. It's the furthest along of all of my cuttings and you'll see that it's absolutely loaded with fruit at every single node and it is rapidly setting fruit even at the new nodes. You can see them all forming here, there, there. I have a dragonfly protecting my plants from mosquitoes. So it's doing an absolutely fantastic job on its own. It's only June 8th and these figs, at least the figs at the bottom, are already at about their mature size. So they are going to have absolutely no problem ripening in my climate. I have a fairly long growing season of about 250 days and our first frost usually isn't until the middle end of November. It takes an Italian 258 fig about 90 days to ripen. They're a longer ripening variety and we're probably about 60 days out from ripening. So that means naturally they're going to ripen about August 8th for me, sometime around there, beginning middle of August, worst case scenario if we get a lot of cloudy cool weather, maybe the end of August. So there's no reason for me to pinch this tree and up top and for me to force any kind of fruiting because all it's going to do is ruin this perfectly compact growth habit that it's doing which is going to give me all kinds of great quality hardwood lignified cuttings for the end of the year and it's going to take the top of that tree and make it bush out in all directions. There is no reason to disrupt its normal growth pattern so I'm just going to let nature take its course because it's going to be a very early fruiter for me in my garden. I do not want to touch this fig. Here is my Olympian fig tree. You'll see this one is loaded up with figs as well. This is operating along a similar timeline that my Italian 258 is. I fully expect these figs to be ripe and ready for the picking at some time in August, maybe the end of August. And you'll see up here on this branch, it's setting fruit as well in every single corner, every single node. You can see them starting right here. So this is another tree that I'm not going to disrupt its natural growth habit. Doing a little walk around here, this is my Laterola Italian Honey. You'll see it is naturally setting figs. 
they're all over the different cuttings. So this will be another tree I'm not going to touch because this, these figs are naturally fruiting and ripening in my growing season. They're all pretty early. Let's take you over to my Chicago Hardy. This is another tree that is pumping out figs and Chicago Hardy is a pretty early ripening variety so maybe this will only take 60 to 75 days. So it's possible that I'll have figs off this tree at some point in August as well. You'll see all of the different nodes are covered in figs. I wouldn't want to touch them. Here's my Smith tree. You'll see this guy is absolutely loaded with figs as well. This one branch is being very prolific. This one branch down here has a really nice sized big fig in it, or big fig on it, if you can see it. It looks beautiful. They're all over the place. Here's another one. So this is another tree where I do not want to disrupt its natural growth habit. Are you getting the point? If you're setting figs naturally, do not touch your trees. Do not disrupt what is working for you. All right, now that I've given you many examples of when you don't want to pinch your figs, let's actually go to an example as to when you do. And here we arrive at the notorious Black Madeira KK plant. This is one of the most coveted plants for fig collectors. It's regarded as one of the best tasting figs on earth. The problem is it's one of the slowest growing figs. It's not particularly vigorous and prolific, and it grows very slowly. On top of that, it has a very long ripening season, 90 to 100 days from when the first figlets start appearing. Now, very recently, I noticed I'm starting to get the initial bumps of figlets on my tree. And this is a very important concept to note. Look at each node and you will see bumps. Right here, you will see on my plant two bumps. When you see two bumps, one of those bumps is going to be a leaf node, the other bump is going to be a figlet. Until you see two bumps, you are not guaranteed that that fig will produce fruit along that node. So even if you were to pinch with one, with one bump there, it's not guaranteed that that will be a fig. Here, you can start to see the initial formations of figs. This will be a figlet. You can see the little figlet starting in this, in all the different nodes here. So I was initially thinking I was going to have to pinch this to, f to force fruiting within my climate, but it looks like I will not have to. They are just starting right now. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Those are the starts of figs. Those are little figlets. I initially thought I may have to pinch this fig to induce fruiting because it's so far behind in terms of growth. So I'm very happy to see that they have little figlets forming. Now what you have to do is you have to work forwards about 100 days with this variety to approximate when these figlets will be ripe edible figs. And if I add 100 days to today's June 8th date, that gets me around September 18th. Now you want your figs to ripen when the temperatures are comfortably in the mid 80s. So what does your temperature in your climate look like in, uh, in around the middle of September? Luckily I'm still in the mid to upper 80s. So this is going to ripen during a very high heat period still. And figs need high heat to make their sugars and be very tasty. So lucky for me, I'm in a good position where this tree can fruit naturally and it, I don't have to disturb its growth habits so I can, get this, uh, I can get this wood right here to keep growing up, 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 up and I'll get some nice cuttings off this tree because if I had to pinch these little branches to induce fruiting now I'm left with these little scraggly cuttings and I'm not going to be able to do much with them. So that's what you have to do. If you are in the Northeast and you see your first frost in mid to late October and the 80 degree weather starts, starts leaving you around uh, Memorial Day or uh, starts leaving you around Labor Day, you're going to want to start pinching your Black Madeiras now because if you do not pinch your Black Madeiras now, if they don't show any, any fruits that are starting, there is not going to be enough growing season left for you to have enough time uh, for your plants to 
uh, go ahead and make figs and then adequately ripen under heat. Here we have a Col de Dame Blanc tree. This is a very immature tree. I bought this from Big Bill. So uh, I just got it about a month ago. So it's just starting to really grow. And this is another late season variety. This is another roughly 90 days till ripening variety. So here you can clearly see I have two bumps at these nodes. There it, at this node. If you can see that there is one on the left and one on the right. Let's see if I can turn it for you. There is one bump on the left and one bump on the right. So I know for a fact that if I pinch the top of this tree right now, if I break that off, the tree is going to put more effort into its fruit and within about seven days or so one of those bumps, whatever represents the fig, is going to turn into a little figlet for me. So if I were knocking, if I go 100 days in the future and I were knocking up against the end of my 80 degree weather, I would want to pinch this tree if I want to have fruit off of it in the season. Uh, but luckily for me, it looks like it's going to make its own figlets naturally. So the end of my 80 degree weather is somewhere around the middle of October, about October 15th. So any tree that I want to ripen um, is going to have to be about 100 days uh, before that 80 degree temperature for me to pinch because you need about 10 days for the initial figlet to form and then 90 days in a variety like this for it to age and for it to ripen. So if I go back in, a, if I go back in time 100 days from October 15th, that is going to take me to about July 5th. So if I don't see this fig tree actively producing figs by July 5th in my climate, I'm going to have to pinch this at the top or it's not going to happen for me this year. There's just not going to be enough growing season left for them to ripen properly with enough heat. So I'm going to keep an eye on this tree, on this tree and I'm going to hope that I start seeing little figlets forming, and it looks like they may, over the next couple of weeks. And if I don't see them by, I, I may go forward in time a little bit. I may be conservative and go by June 30th. So today is June 8th. If nothing happens within the next three weeks, I'm going to start pinching this tree at the expense of cutting wood for next year because I want to fruit this variety and make sure it's true to type and taste what's supposed to be one of the greatest figs in existence. Now I'm going to take you to see my raspberry latte. My raspberry latte, they were the easiest cuttings for me to root. All of them were incredibly vigorous. The mother tree is just, it, it must be an incredible grower. This is just the most vigorous bush. It's absolutely enormous. I have to water this more than any of my other figs because the, the root system is so advanced. But the problem with raspberry latte is it's notorious for taking two or three years to really produce fruit. It's a very shy bearer, and as vigorous as this tree is, it's almost completely void of figs. I should consider myself very lucky because I have one fig forming there. I think it's unusual to have a raspberry latte fig its first year. The other troubling thing about this raspberry latte is I have looked all up and down at all of the different nodes, and all of the different nodes only has they all have just one bump, one bump, one bump. And when it's one bump there, that bump is usually just going to be a leaf node. And this variety is so vigorous in its growth habit that it clearly wants to put out leaves. So I can't find any instances on this plant where I have two bumps, which signifies that if I were to start pinching, that I would get figs. So I'm not 100% sure I'm going to have any significant harvest off of this tree this year. Now luckily because this tree is so vigorous I have all of this spindly side growth. So here is a good example of a piece of side growth that wouldn't necessarily make a great cutting. It's kind of spindly, it's kind of throwaway wood. So this is one example where I am going to go ahead and I'm going to pinch that. You'll see I just pulled the end of the stem off and now it's oozing this, this liquid, which is a caustic, latex-like liquid. You don't really want that to touch your skin. So I'm going to take a risk, and I'm going to hope that if I cut that, if I, if I pinch the tip of that, then I will induce fruiting along this branch. And it's not a big loss, because I'm not going to disturb the upward growth of the really nice wood. 
So I'll still get nice cuttings off this tree, but now I have a few additional chances to fruit on wood that's otherwise not not such uh, not such good quality. Here's another spindly branch right here that I really can't do anything with, if you can see it. So I'm going to snap the tip off of this as well and hope that I get some kind of fruiting there. And then this other spindly piece of side growth that's growing out of control, you can see here, not really good quality wood. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pinch that off too. So what I'm going to do is, I'm now I have three examples of wood that I pinched off. In another week, I'm going to start snapping some of the other funny looking side growth to let it get ahead as well. So I'll keep an eye on this tree and I'll check to see if the branches that I just pinched yield any kind of fruit over over the next week or so, or to see if all I did was induce more branching and these already ugly, funky branches start branching out in even more directions. If that's the case, I may cut them back even further. Here's another example of a spindly branch that I'm going to pinch off. And that's all there is to it. I'll monitor it and I'll check in seven to 10 days to see if I'm getting any fruit formation or if all this is going to do is induce more growth that is going to bush out in all directions. I can't guarantee I'll get a fig off this branch because all they have are single bumps on it. There are no double bumps. So that's one of the cons to this variety. It tends to just require a few years for it to fruit vigorously. So again, just to recap and summarize, if you are going to pinch your fig trees in order to induce fruiting earlier than they would otherwise naturally fruit, you have to take the end of your reliable 80 degree temperatures and you need to work backwards a set amount of days. And those days should be about 70 to 80 days backwards for the earlier maturing types like your Chicago Hardy types, your Celeste types, um, the other Mount Etna types that are similar to Chicago Hardy that tend to ripen earlier. And then for longer season varieties like your Coldadoms, your Black Madeira, etc. You want to work backwards about 100 days from your last reliable 80 degree temperatures. So if that is um, September, if that's sometime in early September, you need to start pinching your trees about now or you are not going to get ripe fruit. And the conservative thing to do is, if you don't know how long it takes to ripen, just assume 90 to 100 days. And of course, of course, of course, if they are setting fruit naturally that will ripen within your growing season, do not, do not, do not pinch. Pinching is only something you should do if you absolutely have to. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is most of what you need to know about the technical concept of pinching your figs. Now there's a lot of information in this video, so if you have any questions, feel free to write comments and I will respond to them as best as I can. I just want to let you know that I'm learning figs along with you guys too. Most of these cuttings are first year trees, so I don't have a long history of figs like some of the other fig gurus around YouTube and the internet do. So I'm not a huge expert, I'm just well versed in the technical side of things and I hope that I outline this in a way that is easy for you to digest and understand. And like I said, if there's anything you don't understand, feel free to ask the questions and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for future updates and I hope to see you all again next time.